Hi, thanks for joining me. Uh, in this part of our discussion about equilibrium, I want to set up a problem-solving approach. Uh, it, it is does tend to be often the longest way to do problems, but it gives us a framework to lay out our information to get our minds going in the correct direction. Uh, you may find shortcuts as you go, and as long as you show sufficient work leading up to your final answer, um, you will likely be fine. Now, the first step is, believe it or not, one of the trickiest. You have to learn and that takes practice. How to identify the substances that are present in a problem. Uh, if you're taking a standardized test at the end of the semester or the end of a year, problems are mixed up. You don't know the math approach you need, so you have to be able to identify the substances. Now, if you have a soluble salt, such as your all group one salts, all nitrate salts, all acetate salts, perchlorates, and so forth. If you have a soluble salt, you're likely to be doing a stoichiometry problem. We're going to, at that point, assume that the reaction proceeds 100% to product unless there's something in the, the um, problem wording that leads you to think otherwise. If you have a strong acid, students often ask me, how do you know if you have a strong acid? And you have to memorize them. And you can find lists of strong acids, hopefully in your notes, um, but certainly on the internet. If you have a strong base, your strong bases are your group one, group two hydroxides, except beryllium and magnesium is, you know, a little dicey there. It's a little ambiguous on its strength. Now, this is key. Don't worry about strong or weak. Any acid, whether it's strong or weak, plus a base, whether it's strong or weak, is going to be a stoichiometry. So what we're talking about here is a neutralization. And a neutralization will proceed 100% to products until the limiting of those two runs out. So any strength acid, any strength base added together to neutralize one another. And remember, neutralizations make a salt plus water, just as a refresher. Your equilibrium, well, there's going to be a lot of general ones, and it will be pretty obvious in the context of the questions. You'll have some general ones, uh, general gas ones. These just don't fit any category, so to speak. We're going to be dealing with equilibrium with what we have previously termed as insoluble salts. Even insoluble salts dissolve a tiny extent. If you have a weak acid or a weak base, or, right, if you add them together, they would neutralize. But if we have a weak acid or a weak base, we're going to assume all of these are reversible and reach an equilibrium, and we would use the equilibrium math that I am introducing in this segment. Okay, So let's take a look at the problem-solving grid. One of the first things you want to do is ask yourself, is there a dilution present? Did you add volume to volume? I'll tell you, I was working a key for an AP test once, and I missed this. I just was reading too fast and going too fast. So if you see volume to volume, you have to voom voom. Volume one times molarity one is equal to volume two times molarity two. That's your dilution formula. You wanna ask yourself, are there any stoichiometry calculations? And that's gonna be dealing with what we talked about above. Um, stoichiometry values, this is key, will typically be put into the initial concentration row if we're dealing with uh, an equilibrium problem. So pay close attention to that. The other thing you want to learn to do for that stoichiometry is throw off spectator ions. Be able to go to molarity of ions within very quickly. 
You don't want to have to set up. Honestly, you don't. If it's avoidable, you don't want to have to set up what I call a BSA table and go through that all of that detail. It's just too much detail and you don't have enough time. Um, so if you can learn to throw off spectator ions and work molarity of ions within, that will help you a lot. So you want to do your dilutions. You want to do your stoichiometry. Um, and then you want to do equilibrium. Use this as a checklist. You may not need all of these steps when you're solving equilibrium, but you want to at least think about each of these steps so you don't rush. Now, the good news is if you're in AP or IB, your test questions tend to give you scaffolding. The bad news is, is the homework you're given that's you know very often out of a textbook or if you're in college chemistry your homework out of a textbook or your professor's test won't give you that scaffolding so if you follow my scaffolding you will be able to help yourself significantly so let's take a look at what I mean so in this question I have a rigid vessel at a temperature of 25 degrees C Watch that, K changes with temperature, so it's common to include temperature even though you don't always use it, okay? Identify the substances. Well, we have some random gases. Um, they don't you know, follow our identifying uh, scheme above. We did not add volume to volume, so we don't need to worry about that, and we don't have any stoichiometry. So there's no dilution, no stoichiometry. We can jump right into our equilibrium. So we are given initial values of 0.526 and 0 0.329. I'm going to show you how to fill in this rice table. And there's no indication I have any product. We don't have to worry about Q or the reaction quotient because this has this reaction, there's no choice but to proceed to make product. Okay. So I like to make the one that is a one-to-one -one mole ratio, my unknown. So that's minus x, so that's minus 2x, and that's plus 2x. And so then this would be 0 0.526 minus 2x. Um, the problem tells us right here that this is 0 0.23. Um, 203. So I'm going to put that number there. Let's check that I've added all my values. And I have. And then this would be 2x. So my equilibrium constant, uh, constant in terms of partial pressures, don't use brackets if it's partial pressures, is the partial pressure of NO2 squared over NO squared times O2. Okay. So that's the information I have. You want to fill in as much of this grid as possible with the information you're given. Now we can start our problem solving. Because I know both an initial and an equilibrium, I can solve for x, because 0.329 minus x is equal to 0.203. So x is equal to 0.126. Okay. So if I plug in x in all of those places here, so I'm going to plug in for x there, plug in for x there, um, you would get values, let's say partial pressure of NO is going to equal 0 0.274, and the partial pressure of BR2, we already know at equilibrium, is 0.203 and my partial pressure of NOBR is 2 times x. So that's equal to 0.252. Now, two types of questions will be asked. Calculate Kp. So if I plug those values in, I'm going to let you do the math there. We get 0.417 for Kp. Now, the other type of question you may be asked is what is the total pressure in the container when you're done? Well, total pressure is the sum of all your partial pressures. 
So my P total would be the sum of all those individual pressures. And if I did my algebra right, I get 0.723 atmospheres. So check that you can plug all these in and get these numbers right. Okay, And then finally, especially if you are in... Um, if you are in college chemistry, you will have to go back and forth between Kp and Kc. And to do that, we have Kp, which is 0.417, is equal to Kc times R, 0 0.0821, times T, and that's got to be in Kelvin. You can only use Celsius if it's a delta T. So you've got to convert that um, to Kelvin. And that's to the delta N. Well, delta N is going to be, and that's delta N of gas. It's not listed that way, but I, I like to write it that way as a little reminder to myself. I'm only dealing with gases. It's going to be 2 minus 2 plus 1. So delta N is minus 1. So 0 0.417 is equal to Kc times 0 0.0821 times 298 to the minus 1. And if I've done my algebra right, and you definitely want to double check that, that's part of learning from videos, is to make sure you can follow this math. Um, I have a Kc value of 102. So very different values because we're doing different molarities and different amounts. So hope that was helpful. Thanks for joining me. Take care.